1863, Julius Haast discovered the pass that bears his name. Two years later, gold was discovered and a hundred miners arrived at Jackson Bay. The interest grew in the region and in 1870, a proposal was put to the county council to establish a settlement at Jackson Bay. By 1871, blocks of land were carved out for settlement. In 1874, the provincial government commenced work on cutting a track by which stock could be driven from the head of Lake Wanaka to Jackson Bay via Haast Pass. Another track was also cut in 1875 by farmers at Haast, so stock could be driven from the Landsborough and Cascade Valleys to sail yards of Wataroa, which typically took about two weeks, such as the severity of the conditions on the track. In April 1875, the Nolan family moved to the special settlement of Jackson Bay from Hokitika as part of Julius Vogel's ambitious immigration and public works program. The Jackson Bay experiment was a failure and the settlers struggled to farm poor land in extreme isolation. Most left, but Andrew and Mary Nolan stayed on in the area and moved north to Okaroo, just south of Haast around 1882. The family established a farm there and acquired a pastoral run in the Cascade Valley. Beef cattle were the main product of South Westland. Stock were mostly left to roam up the river valleys, feeding on the rich grassy areas of the river flats. A stock route was pushed through to the Cascade up the Jackson River, but it followed the river most of the way up and passed over a low saddle that separates the Marta River from the Jackson. Due to the significant rainfall of the area, the track would often be scoured out, making access to the farm at Cascade and further south impassable. A new road was eventually blown through the rock bluffs high above the floodplains for all weather access to the Nolan Southern Block. The old road, however, can still be traced on satellite imagery and we are attempting to follow this old road as true as we possibly can to keep this historic route open for future generations to enjoy. I'm up here.
Due to the extreme flood conditions that can occur in this valley, the river can often be diverted down the old cattle track, so creating these long narrow lagoons in the bush. The substrata in this area sits on a granite base. The trees can only grow in a shallow glacial moraine, so during the floods, huge trees can be washed down and log jam the old cattle track. Where the landlocked lagoons get trapped in the softer pastoral areas of the valley floor, the 1870s cattle track just turns into a long swamp and there's no other way around them but straight through the middle.
tissue. It feels like it's got a rocky base. I'm better, right? <laughs> Thank you. 
Ah, here just quietly and sneak out to the edge of the clearing in the morning, wouldn't you? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Have you stolen this truck? I noticed that Rod was wheel spinning only on one side, so suggesting that his rear diff lock was not operational. A quick check and it appears that the wrong rated fuse had been installed uh, I at some stage. Rod, it sounds like you can make it down there, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you just leave it? Did you hook it back up? You said you'll make it down there. Yeah, that's what you call it, it's a drive wheel light. Oh, that's, it might be last day, Evan. Are you up with the whole group now, Evan? Yeah, we are. Well, we'll move on then if everybody's with us. Okay, you sideswiped the whole trail? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. That's a good day. 
You can tell when you're in an area that has been well used over the years, when every creek, ridge and flat piece of ground has a name. Here we made a stop about two thirds of the way between Teapot Flat and Lindsay Flat below Blacksmith Spur just before John Creek to fix a flat tyre. Because Gareth had split rims, the team were able to jack the vehicle up, bust the rim off, repair the tube and reassemble the rim all in the middle of a running stream. Goes in one side, comes out the other. Oh, okay, new ideas. Yeah, I bet. That's why I like these trips, they eh? pick yeah, up all sorts of stuff, eh? Well, because a lot of the guys are so bloody prank Oh, yeah, yeah. They've been doing it for 30 years.
<laughs> Should I give it a kick? I'm sorry, yeah. Spun back into the yeah, back into the path. Uh, no. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Nudge it out you of the way. Just pushed it out of the way. Yeah. yeah. Turn inland, you can see the road over there to the right. At Lindsay Flat, we started to lose the route. It was obvious that the 1870s cattle track headed across the river and cut across another meadow. But due to the changing river, the meadow had become a very soft, boggy area. This area is designated as a picnic area off the side of the Cascade Road. It's a real trap for anyone looking for a quiet picnic spot or an overnight stop for a camper van. We made our way back to the main river and continued up the main course. Since we were now well up the river, the mountains had closed in to form a gorge, which is where the old stock route parts company with the Jackson, which leads east, deep into the Olivine Range, while the stock route follows Saddle Creek east and over the Martyr Saddle and into the Cascade. What a great day out, and really amazing to be able to follow a 150 year old cattle route. Time for a hot shower, a cold beer, and a great feed at the Hard Antler pub again.
So... 